I've reviewed so many different phones this year, from phones that are super budget to phones that cost over like $1,500. And it's kind of become tradition at the end of the year to kind of rank all the phones that I've reviewed, talk about which ones have like the best value, which ones made me most excited, and then which ones I feel like could really use some improvement for next year. And so I've literally been looking forward to making this video the entire month. And the first category that we're gonna start with is like the best value budget category. I feel like generally people are already kind of like set in an ecosystem. So they're either going to go for iOS or for Android. And then it's just a question of which phone to get in that category. And I think for the iPhone budget side of things, the iPhone SE 2022 is an obvious choice for a couple reasons. For 429, it's by far Apple's cheapest new iPhone. The closest next thing would be to get like a 13 mini, or an older iPhone, but I think getting a new iPhone has a couple key benefits. The most important one being software support. Like I think a lot of people buy iPhones and then keep it for a long period of time. And so if you're planning to keep your phone for a long time, then buying a new phone kind of makes the most sense because you're ensuring yourself the most amount of software support. I think the other things that the SE 2022 offers are either pros or cons, depending on who you are. So touch ID is still here. 4.7 inch display is still here. That's either an amazing thing. Like some people are going to be stoked because they love that build. They have nostalgia for it. It, they feel like the physical button is just better and they want a compact phone. And for other people, that's definitely going to be a reason that they won't buy it because the display is definitely small and typing on it is a little bit of a struggle, especially if you're coming from a bigger phone. But I think in general, to get into the iOS ecosystem, the iPhone SE 2022 is a great phone with a pretty good camera. On the Android side of things, there were so many different options that I could have selected. Like Samsung has a lot of A series phones. Motorola has some offerings. Honestly, Motorola is getting like a runner up here because I feel like they came out with a lot of really strong offerings this year. Like the Moto G Stylus, for example. But I would say that I think that the Pixel 6a is going to win this category because it has a really great camera. Like in Marquez's camera test, it ranked so highly over even like $1,000 flagship phones. And first place is the Pixel 6a, the people's choice camera of 2022. And it's because Google has incredible AI computational photography. So generally photos on this phone look great. And I feel like camera technology is one of the most important things that consumers actually rank for because it's one of the ways that we use our phones the most. And the other things that you also get are years of software support because it's a pixel. So like fast software updates, and then also like a really affordable price for performance. Areas that you're gonna miss out on obviously would be like a super premium build quality. It's a nice build, but it's not a super premium build. And also you don't get like any bells or whistles features. Like you don't get um, a stylus or multiple cameras in the back. Some of the features that other budget phones really optimize for. The next category that I'm like really excited about is innovative phones. And I think for this one, the obvious answers are the Samsung Fold 4 and the Flip 4. And between the two, I still like the Fold 4 better because it's more interesting. But I think that the Flip 4 really had a dynamic year this year where a lot of people were giving it attention and love that hadn't previously. And I think that's because Samsung really refined the build on it. The price came down a little bit. It became like a more enticing phone. However, I feel like if you weren't convinced on the form factor before, the updates this year weren't the reason now to get it. Like the updates weren't significant enough where now you're like, oh, I didn't think this was valuable, but now I do. Either like already were really attached to this build and like the Flip 4, form factor or you weren't. I personally think that the Fold 4 form factor is a little bit more practical because it gives you this completely new form factor. The Flip 4 is great for pocketability and not getting addicted to your phone. Like you have to be intentional with it. So I feel like I was less likely to like mindlessly scroll on it because I would have to be like, oh, I'm gonna open the phone now. Whereas my other phone, sometimes I just open up Instagram and I start scrolling and then I'm like, what am I doing? I'm wasting so much time here. And I don't even realize I'm doing it. It's like habitual. On the Flip 4, that definitely helped me break that habit. And it's great for like going out. But I think the Fold 4, because it offers that regular smart smartphone experience and then also a tablet. It's great for productivity and then it's also great for condensing what you take with you when you travel. I am not known to be a light packer. In fact, I'm very much known to be the opposite. This is what happens when you overpack. So any space that I can save, like not having to bring a tablet with me is huge. And I just think we're getting really close to foldables becoming very much refined and also dropping a little bit in price. So next year, I'm super excited to see what happens. But I would say that the Fold 4 is like the most innovative and interesting phone of the year, in my opinion. The other major phones that I reviewed this year were the S22 and S22 Ultra and S22 Plus and also the Pixel 7, Pixel 7 Pro, iPhone 14, iPhone 14 Pro. Pretty amazing this is my job and I get to review all these. But to give you the lay of the land here, I think that the Pixel 7 and Pixel 7 Pro are in an interesting spot again this year where there's a big price discrepancy between them, but not a big feature discrepancy between them. Meaning that the Pixel 7 Pro definitely gives you a little bit extra, like you get a better display, you get better camera, also get a little bit of a bigger display and a little bit more RAM. So theoretically it should be faster and better with processing, but the Pixel 7 is a little bit cheaper. And so it kind of becomes like this really great phone for a pretty reasonable price. Like 
it has a lot of the flagship features, but it doesn't have that $1,000 price tag that a lot of flagships have. And so for that reason, I tend to recommend the Pixel 7 over the 7 Pro, but personally, I still use this Pixel 7 Pro because as like an enthusiast, I like all like the little extra features. But in general, I think like if we just did like value per dollar, I think that the Pixel 7 is a better film. With S22 and S22 Ultra, there actually is a bigger difference, I think, between the two. And so the S22 Ultra to me is like for the person that wants all the bells and whistles in a smartphone, great performance, amazing camera, like tons of different focal ranges and extra features, and also an amazing display. I think that Samsung still makes the best displays on the Android side of things, fast charging, you can now get S Pen support. It's a great phone. I think the S22 Ultra is low key one of the best phones that came out this year, but since Samsung always launches the phones earlier in the year, I feel like by the end of the year, sometimes they're forgotten by people and they shouldn't be because it's great. The regular S22 is also a really good phone and good value, but I feel like it's in this weird price range where like if you look at like value per dollar, I think it's a little bit less worth it than like the S22 Ultra. With the 14 and 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max and 14 Plus actually, the Plus is great because it allows you to get that bigger phone without spending the extra money for like the Pro. And I think that Apple kind of faced a similar issue this year where the 14 and 14 Pro were like similar to the extent where like general consumers were kind of confused on which one to get. But I think that they did a really good job of making the 14 Pro and Pro Max very similar. So the only thing that you're losing when you upgrade between them is just the size. I hate when manufacturers make the bigger phones significantly better. So I'm really glad they didn't do that. Out of those four phones, personally, my daily driver is the 14 Pro. There were so many other phones that also came out this year either abroad or in the more budget categories or on like the fringes of tech. And so I definitely want to take a closer look at those in 2023. And actually I'm committing to posting every other Friday in 2023. So if you like tech videos, I'm going to be more consistent with them. I want to thank you guys so much for an incredible year. I love technology. I love our community and I appreciate you so much. Have an incredible rest of the day. Happy holidays. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.